Hello, I am Kat Woods and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to share with you a little bit, I don't want to say a little bit because there's going to be a lot of information, a ton, so much information. Um, I do have a video similar like this. It's called How uh, the Bible Transformed Me. It's my most viewed video on my channel so far. But um, it still seems like a ton of people still have the same question. How do I stay so devoted to reading my Bible? How do I get it to where I'd rather read my Bible than hang out with my friends? I'd rather read my Bible than going out. I'd rather read my Bible than watching TV. I, you know, people want to know, how did I get there? How am I doing it? Because a ton of us, I too struggled at the very very beginning of my walk this is why i always encourage you all don't try to follow my footsteps because my situation my life the things that have happened to me in the past are way different than what has happened to you you have to meet god where you are at in your season right now now you can totally take the tips that i had shared um, the tips that have helped me apply them to your life to see if they work but please 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 don't go out run out and buy the bibles well cat said this helped her uh, at the beginning so it's going to help me um cat said the second bible was this and it's going to help me it, it won't it may not work the same way for you i always say do what works best for you try out new things of course 100% try them out. If you see a Bible and you get excited about it, that's the one that you're going to want. That's the one you need to get excited about a Bible. It may be um, it may be because of the color of it. It may be because of the text block. It may be because it has pictures in it. If you are not excited about a Bible, you will not pick it up. I don't care how devoted of a, a Christian you think you are. I know for me, I if I pick up a Bible that I am not excited about, I don't like the text block, I don't like the size, I don't like the feel, I will not use it. And I'm okay with saying that. I'm not too smug of a person to say, oh, well, any Bible will work for me and I will stay devoted and I will read it every day and I will enjoy it. No. I wish I was like that. I, I will hopefully one day get there, but right now I'm not. I know what works for me. I know what I get excited about. And if I'm excited about it, I'm going to use it and I'm going to be in it every single day. So that's what you have to find out. That is going to be your homework for today. Finding out the Bible that gets you excited. Next question, why does it get you excited? Learn that question. Just because a Bible looks pretty, maybe it's, um, okay, like for me. Uh, what can I get an example for? Okay, let's just say, oh, this one right here in front of me. Okay, this one right here in front of me. I was raised up, many of you know, in a KJV onlyist household. So that's the only translation that was allowed in the house. So as a child, Oh, I can't read that. I gotta scoot over, Nuggie. We do have the little producer here. Here, I gotta switch the, the chair. We have the little producer here on my lap. And I have so many lights because it's so dark right now. It's fall, so it's getting darker later. And I have so many Bibles around me. It, it, it's like a maze right now. So, and the angle's different, so I'm just trying... I won't be, be bringing up no Bible so you can get a closer look. I won't be sharing no personal notes, nothing like that. You're just going to hear my story. So get a cup of tea, coffee, get something that where you're going to relax. This is going to be a blog style uh, video, okay? So KJV only is home, only KJV. So as a child, I really struggled with that translation. I could not connect to the Bible. I had no idea what I was reading let alone the archaic poetic words, I was so confused. I felt further away from God using that translation than drawing near to him. 
even though my mom said the more you read, the more you, you'll get used to it, the more you understand it, the more, 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 more. It was not working with me. I could not connect. No matter how pretty the Bible cover was, no matter how flowery, it could be my favorite color. I had a purple one, love purple, you all know that. Had a beautiful purple one, um, had okay ribbons for what I knew back then. Um, I, I put my name in it. I did everything to personalize the Bible for me to where it made it feel like it was mine. Um, but once it actually came to the meat of the word, it just, I was not excited about it. I could not understand it. When you cannot understand stuff, that's when you start feeling um, down about yourself. That's when you're like, well, if God wants to really communicate with me, he'll make it to where I understand. He's going to help me. He's going to send me the Holy Spirit to where I can understand the message that is in here. He's going to reveal those hidden gems and secrets to me, right? That's, that's what we hear. That's what is preached to us. But if you don't understand what is in the Bible, how is any of that going to come along? How is any of that going to happen? So I struggled through my childhood, never had a connection. I prayed. I was raised up. I always heard Bible verses, sang the Bible hymns. I always did everything that my mom had right there with us, okay? So I, I was raised up as a Christian, but in my opinion, I was just following what what my mom put in front of me. The regiment, the plan, the reading plan, the Bible studies, what was right there accessible. In my opinion, did not help me at all. I felt further away in the moment I moved out of the house, I was rebellious against God. I hated him because all of the problems that have happened in my life, I blamed him. It was your fault. You never wanted to meet me in the pages. You never wanted to teach me. You stayed further away from me instead of drawing me closer to you as your child. So that's how I felt. All right. And this is just from like the regular Bible. So this is why I say get a Bible that is excited for you. Because if you just have any old Bible in front of you and you don't feel excited about it, you don't understand it, it's not going to benefit you. You need a Bible that's going to benefit you at the beginning, okay? It does change. You will change, and that's what's important. You have to understand you will be changing, and you will be transforming, hopefully every year. But every so often, you should see some kind of change, all right? You should want some kind of change. If your Bible system, your Bible reading, your Bible marking is still the same as it was in uh, 1982 like you gotta change things up a little bit because you yeah you should be stretching your legs out way more than just keeping the same old system you know I understand if it if it doesn't if it works don't um, fix it type deal I get that but you still got to change and grow even past that all right so I learned that the regular old Bible with just the text in it was not working for me. The translation was not working for me. Walking around in Walmart, this was the first Bible that got me back into falling in love with God's Word. This is it. This is where it all started, was the Inspire um, Journaling Bible. So this is an NLT translation, way on the opposite side of the KJV translation. When I opened this up in the store, and the first thing I did was just, you know, read read one, one paragraph. I just read one paragraph, and I was like, there's no way I understood that. I doubted myself. I could not understand. How was I able to understand this random chapter in, this, in the Old Testament? I understood every single word. But when it was in the KJV translation, I was sitting there scratching my head the whole time, totally confused about what I was doing. That got me excited. Not only did that get me excited, I see these margins over here. Had no idea why they were there. Clueless on what I was supposed to do with them. But I knew this also got me excited. But when I seen the um, blank at the time, these blank pages that you could color... What I've been seeking out my whole life, since I was a child, I have been wanting to connect 
with God's word. I wanted to be active with God, God's word. I always had that hunger, that, that excitement for it, had no idea how to apply it. I was, com I was so, I was confused. I didn't know where to go. No matter who I talked to, they didn't understand what I needed and what I was seeking. They, clueless, had no idea. So, um, this, this was it. This was the Bible that I needed to get back into the Word. So I was super creative. Always been a creative person. That's just always how I was. Always been a writer my whole life. Just always kept in a little diary. You know, when you're five years old, dear diary, the sun was up. Or I like this little boy. And, you know, just little girl stuff. So I've always kept a diary. Never was allowed to keep the diary because we always moved. But that's another thing. Um, so this right here fell in love with it got a pack of color pencils and then there that's where it all started for me being creative where I could physically hold a bible in my hand this this was my bible I can hold it in my hand I can use it I can do whatever I wanted to it I didn't have to hear oh you can't mark in it you can't uh you have to keep the pages clean like I was adding paint to it I, I was just enjoying it for what it was and it completely sparked something in me that I, I that was dormant the whole time I had these tags over here because even though I knew the Bible I didn't really know where the books of the Bible were so these little tags they taught me where the books of the Bible were and that helped me. I don't like these anymore, but it is for, again, this is the transformation. This is showing me I am growing. I am learning. So flipping through her, I'm like, I, I love it because it showed me and it taught me the memories that was in here. Now, coming from here, the little eye candy on top, love it, love it, love it. It just, that's what I needed at the time. And even though I was getting um, hate, there was hate, there's, you get hate no matter where you go. You'll get people saying, well, you shouldn't be marking up the Bible like that. You shouldn't be adding that kind of stuff to it. It's just, you should be happy that I was in the Bible. You should be happy that I was using the Bible. That is what anyone's goal should be. You should be in the Bible, excited about the Bible. Who cares what I'm doing with my Bible? This is mine. It's not yours. I'm not going to your house pulling your Bible off the shelf and marking it up. You should be praising the Lord that I'm grow I'm growing stronger and closer to him. That should be every every Christian's goal and we should continue to uplift people and not put them down because we don't agree with what they're doing, how they're doing it. They're not doing it like me. That attitude needs to be kicked out and fast. So, the next one was that she reads truth Bible. I knew there were different Bibles out there, but I had no idea these were on the market. That was something else. I was had a real sheltered life, so I didn't have a Facebook account and none of that. Like, I didn't know there was a community out there. Uh, I knew there were churches, obviously, because I went to church, but I didn't know there was online anything until 2016 when I started this. And I really, really, really felt... That was God's plan. God wanted me to start here at this time and then fire off from there. It was it was all him, his doings, so all glory to God. So I had no idea about these Bibles, except for the Inspire Bible, which was at Walmart, and that's what I seen there. So that's the only Bible that I knew. I didn't know about the She Reach Truth Bible, about the Battlefield of the Mind Bible. He sent amazing sisters at that time to send me these Bibles. So I'm having these Bibles pop up in my uh, in, in my post office box and I'm like, whoa, this is this is a, this is it. This is another amazing this. Wow. How is this even happening? So there was a whole new spark coming in a whole new excitement. Another reason why I became a Bible reviewer, because I know I'm not the only one that doesn't know a lot about different Bibles. There are so many different kinds of Bibles out there. Just because a Bible is set for one thing, like this is called a devotional Bible. This is a woman's devotional Bible. At this time, they only had a woman's. They did not have a man's. They do have a man's now. My husband has one and I have one. So it's a he reads truth and a she reads truth. And they're just, they're devotional Bibles. But 
just because it's a devotional Bible, there's nothing saying that you can't turn this into a praying Bible. You can read the devotional, read the Word of God, write down prayers for you, for your children, for your family, for whatever's going on. Like you can turn it into whatever that you need it for that season. So flipping through here, I seen these margins and by now I knew like, okay, the margin space. The margin space is for being creative. Even though I was super creative in this um, uh, in this Bible, now I'm not turning to anything creative. <laughs> there's super creative pages in here when i seen these at the beginning of the books they have these go deeper these outlines these go deeper um the list or whatever it is so it's week one week two week three week four so the whole month i could spend in this one book and i can go deeper into the old testament and the new testament matching up what i was reading Learning that I can do something like that also got a new wheel turning. I knew I was able to be creative in the Bible because I was, you know, I was doing it. I was able to bring a creative side. I was praising the Lord in a new way. And here I was be able, able to be creative in the margins. I was still able to leave the word of God, the text block alone. Look at that, just oh, so gorgeous. So having these these marginal spaces out here are so available, so ready just to be filled up, it taught me that I can go deeper. And again, with the deeper um, questionnaire that you have at the beginning, it was getting a new wheel turning for me. I wanted more, I sought out more i didn't start like that so if you're at the beginning you can't jump from a to z and then miss all the middle stuff you have to be you have to meet god right where you're at okay oh, i remember this one of the sisters sent me this card oh i remember that that was cute and yeah like i i did little things like this it's just oh yeah this old kitty held the card that's oh, or something like that that was yeah Love it, love it, love it, love it. I love flipping through and seeing this. Okay, so from this, I knew I wanted more, more meat. I didn't just want to be creative, even though I still had that creative bug. I still wanted to be creative, but I wanted more. It was just knowledge, seeking, seeking, seeking. I, I needed to learn more. So the battlefield of the mind was the next one. And when I was sharing this, again, never knew anything about the Bible, didn't know what was out there on the market. So when I shared this, and you can tell I was a baby Christian because the way I was talking, when I shared this, I said Joyce Myers was the one that created this translation, the, Ap the Amplified Translation. That is not right. No, she did not. This was her book. She had the devotionals, the articles, and the prayers. The Amplified Version is or the Amplified Translation, or a version, people call it version, it doesn't matter. But anyways, that's a translation of its own. She, she likes using that translation. It's not something that she herself created. <laughs> so, see, I had to learn. I was learning. So that's the whole thing about my channel. If you go back to the older ones, you're going to see, um, I drew that, you're going to see my, my growth, you're going to hear from the way I talked. I talk different from the beginning to where I talk different now. I speak differently. I, I think differently. And obviously, I know way more. It That's just, I, 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 lo I love, 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 love it to where I can, sometimes I'm super embarrassed by it because I'm like, wow, I really said the translation, the Amplified Translation was Joyce Myers. This is what I've been talking about. A ton of people sharing heavy um, tags. You will wrinkle up and destroy your Bible paper. It doesn't matter if you reinforce it with washi tape. It will still damage your Bible paper. So learning things like this over time, I like to also share on my in my sister's group. Like, please, it looks amazing. I mean, my Bible gardens, that's how I got big was from my Bible gardens. 
that this is it. This is where I started. This not only got me excited, but it got thousands, thousands of people excited. So, um, I had, I had little mini Bibles to where I could take them out. The same thing, just a bunch of eye candy. These ones I went ahead and marked up on the, bi the Bible itself because it wasn't something I was reading from. I had other Bibles that I was reading from, so I was okay with just designating a Bible just for this purpose, all right? I have Pray the Scripture Bibles, which I've shared 101 times on my channel, but I'm just trying to show you the way I've got de um, my devotion. This is how I got so devoted to the Bible. I got excited about the Bible tried out so many different Bibles, you may not need to do that. You are at a spot to where you can look at my Bible reviews, go through the 200 plus Bible reviews that I reviewed and be like, that one seems good. I can use that one because it has wide margins. I can write out my prayers for this. Or you can look at it and be like, that has wide margins. That's not going to do me no good. I need a regular Bible or I need a Bible in this translation or I need a study Bible. Like you have that option. I didn't have that option starting out. I had no knowledge about what Bibles were, were out there. I had no idea. This is a process and a step that I had to learn. So you're basically able to see all my mistakes and learn, not really mistakes, but you're able to see my growth from a quick span. Like, like you could just sit there and binge all of my past six years all in like a week or something like just sitting there like okay she grew from here she now here and now it's in here so you're able to see that i had to live it and experience it and work it so there's been mistakes there's and what i say about there's been mistakes um i'm jumping a little bit ahead but just really quick there's been mistakes that i've made and when it comes to premium bibles you really don't want to make any mistakes but hey they happen and it's okay so this is my very, very first Allen. Absolutely love the purple, love the blue, and it broke my heart within, I think, four days of owning it. I got a paper cut, and I have blood. You can see it right here when the silver. There is actually my blood on the Bible itself, which, of course, broke my heart when that happened. I don't know if it's really anyways so it broke my heart when it happened but it was another way that i knew like hey there's no other bible out there like this there's a ton of people who may have this particular bible but theirs don't look like this and it comes with the wide margins so this is the allen 62 and or yeah 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 62 wide margin okay i was like 63 is the the go okay but anyways so it has the Sovereign. There we go. 62 Sovereign. Sovereign is the wide margins. The regular 62 is not. Sorry. Had a little brain fart there. But okay. So because of the wide margins that it has, I still wanted to be a little bit creative and I wanted to bring it into my Bible. So what I thought was just leaving the text block clean. So even if it looked like the, cup, like the words were covered, they really wasn't. I was able to lift up everything everything moves and i was able just to read fine um but doing that it really balked up the corners of my bible so there's a real hump here there's a hump here so i learned again making mistakes over time you learn what what there's certain things certain tools do to your bibles so the second one i did not do that i kept it pretty much even and as you can tell, I'm lessening all my tags are now up here at the top to where my fingers are not really going to um, wrinkle the pages or rip the pages. There's no damage up here. So that's another tip you can use. But with this one, there are no wide margins. So what I had to do with this guy, if I really wanted to go deeper, which that was my goal, I wanted to learn more. I wanted more out here. This is where I brought in the posty notes. This is the most filled posty note Bible that I own still to this day. This is one of the main, <laughs> main pages that I have shared on the internet. And yeah, everyone has seen this. If you know anything about my channel, you have seen this. Um, and if you don't, you're missing a lot. 
but okay. So my first premium Bible um, experience and the one that really started it for me was my Quintel, this one. Uh, E.B. sent me this Bible. It was a used Bible. Already had a guy's marking in it and his name and all that. But I covered it up because it, it was now going to be my Bible. So my presentation, I started the travel log right here. So this is where I covered up the guy's information and I put my own. So this was my first premium Bible. This is where I fell in love with the paper. The paper is something out of this world. If you never had a premium Bible in your hand, you will never know the feel of regular Bible versus the premium Bible. The Bible that's printed in the Neverlands. This is the one. This is the ultimate. The young blood. The, this is what really got me excited. If the paper was on the, the any uh, translation was on the young blood paper, I was okay. I was good to go. I was going to be excited about it. It didn't really mean like the covers and stuff didn't really matter like what color it was. I didn't really care about that. Not so much as the paper. This brings my reading experience to a whole new level. It just, it did something to me. Not only that, oh, my card. The font design, it was something I have never, ever seen. I didn't even know there were different font designs. I didn't even know that, um, I knew there was large print and small print. That That's what I knew. I didn't know, really pay attention to a double column, a single column. Like, this is where I learned all of that good stuff from. Like, and this is where I went down the rabbit hole. I knew what I liked. And I knew what I needed to, um, to stay excited about God's word. So with doing this, how I don't recommend everyone, hey, rush out there and get a two, $300 Bible. And then magically you're going to fall in love with it. And you're never going to want to leave it. That may not be you. Again, this is me. This is my, my walk. So if I wanted to continue to grow my collection here. That means no more get going to Starbucks. That means no more getting designer clothes, no more $600 pants, no more $300 shirts, nothing like that. I had to prioritize. Do I want to do I want to look better on the outside or do I want to go ahead and put that money into making my spiritual life stronger? You know, so you really have to prioritize when it comes to your spiritual walk. And the same way when it goes into my friends are calling me up. They want to go out, but I didn't do my Bible reading for today. So should I just put God on the back burner and go out with my friends? Say I'm going to do it when I come home. I know I'm not going to do it when I come home because it's going to be too late. You need to start prioritizing where your time, where your money, where your efforts are going to. The moment you start putting God first, you will start, you will see how it becomes easier. It's no longer just a check. You no longer come to your Bible like, okay, it's my Bible reading. So I have to read Genesis, a chapter from Genesis, a chapter from Matthew. Okay, let's go ahead and get this done. Two, two chapters? Wow, that's going to take me a good 15, if you're a slow reader, 45 minutes. Like, this is going to take a good chunk of my time. But hey, at least I'll, I'll be a good Christian and God will smile down upon me. Like, think about where your heart is, your mind is. Think about how that makes God feel. Like, you're reluctantly coming to him like that? You, you can't. You can't do that. You have to come to him with... I want the knowledge that you're giving. There is a couple of notes that I wrote out that I did want to share. Um, and I can, I guess I could just read them out really quick. Like scripture is God's manual for divine truth for the patterns for of your thoughts and your actions. So if you are finding yourself being real hateful to people, you're real short with people, you're real, um, you're real judgy, you're just... You're just overall not a nice person. 
but you're calling yourself a Christian, soaking your thoughts up every day before you start your day in the Bible with God's word at hand and at the forefront of your mind, that's going, that's going to help you change. No, doing it for a week is not going to make you change. Doing it for a month is not going to make you change. I wish there were some magic verse in there where I could say, hey, read Psalms, uh, Psalms 23 and you're going to be fine. You're going to be good to go and you're going to change and that's all it is. No, this is a lifelong process. The same one. Um, let's see. The second one I have is as a believer, you have the capability to understand and respond to scripture. That's because of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you. And it imparts spiritual discernment, wisdom, and you have the mind of Christ. So, so many of us come to our Bibles with, like how I was, I don't understand this. How am I going to read it? How am I going to draw closer to him? You can't do it. The Holy Spirit through you will show you, will teach you. And part of that is, knowing the translation, knowing where you're at in your spiritual walk. Just because you don't like the NLT, the NLT is the easiest. You can start there and then go into the translation that you really, 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 really want to know. Read from the NLT from beginning to ending. Start getting used to how the Bible's being read and then jump into your favorite, okay? That's the best thing. That That's what has helped me. That's how I learned. The third one, but having the ability to understand, understand spiritual truth doesn't guarantee you that you exercise that ability. God says to the Israelites through the prophets of, Hos of Hosanna, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. His truth was available to them, but they ignored it and they lived in, disobe in disobedience. So just because you're coming... How, how was that? How was it taking it? The people were destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Yeah, you just, you got to gain knowledge, which is the whole, since the beginning, since the beginning of, and I said it right now, when I had the Inspire Bible, I wanted more. I wanted more meat. I was giving milk at the beginning with the creative stuff, the purdy stuff, that was milk. But the further I got along in it, I wanted more knowledge. I needed to know what God had in the Bible for me at that moment and at that time. Did it stay the same? No. I changed every single year with every single Bible that was given to me, that was approached to me. The beginning it was happy, it was beautiful, it was it was eye candy, it was it was lovely stuff. This year he got me into where does that Bible go? He got me into the scary, scary stuff. My son was pronounced dead at the hospital and he he brought him back to life the doctor said that he wasn't going to be able to talk walk speak eat he had to be taught all of those all over again within a week my son was out of the hospital walking talking playing basketball like he was just like a complete miracle than what the doctors told me saying all of that with my bible reading plan he got me in these uh these scary subjects Fear, doubt, worry, anxiety, um, loneliness, all of those words that we do not want to face, we do not want to hear, we do not want to read about. That's what he had me focus on for this, what was it, six, yeah, since the six. So right here, I share and I keep track and I have a whole playlist over this one Bible. So if this is something that you are struggling with right now, I have a whole playlist from January to June I was in this Bible every single day, marking it up over and over. I read it four different times, writing up, marking out different things. He had me over, reading over the scary stuff and not just paying attention to the the joy, love and peace and all the good, the good feel. Um, there we go. The good feel scriptures. He had me dive deep into the scriptures we really don't want to face and we don't want to hear. So we try to run away from it. All right. So there would be seasons. There would be seasons like that. Not saying start out like that. You start out wherever he wants you. Whatever you need right now, he will tell you. Pray about it. Ask him, Lord, I feel like I need this in my life, but you guide me. Guide me to what is best for me right now. 
All right, um, the last one that I have here, I have, I've heard many people say that they avoid, oh, wait, wait, I heard many people say that they can't, could have avoided much grief if only they've known how to read more thoroughly, read the Bible more thoroughly. If only they have taken the time to learn what God expected of them in that particular situation. Perhaps you feel that way. The Bible's the best way to avoid making a mistake in the future is faithfully, prayfully, patiently, and through saturating your mind with biblical truth. So that one right there, when I was reading that, I was like, oh, so many people, including myself, come to the Bible with, I, I feel, I feel this way. This is, this is what I'm going to. And he has the answers for us. Instead of picking up the phone, um, picking up the phone to call in our friends, our family, or whatever, like, hey, I'm going through this. How can you help me? Your suggestions go to the Bible. This is this is this is where it's at. Prayfully come to it and be patient. This isn't a magic eight ball. You cannot scroll through. Oh, God, please show me. I'm grieving right now, and I need a verse. So I feel, okay, this is this is the verse that I need. And if it doesn't fit your narrative on what you need at this moment, you go and do it again. You do the whole magic eight ball. Okay, this is, this is it. So this must be what was meant. No, you're reading that one verse out of context, for one. You have to read the whole chapter to understand what that one verse was. His word was not supposed to be uh pick out one verse and make you feel good that that was never never the intention of this so um i, I did want to say that but so this is the best way i can tell you how i got a devoted heart for his word like i find bibles that get me excited this cute little one this is a humble lamb this is their first personal size so I've had several all of their big the big humble lamb bibles they've had KJV and KJV bibles this is the new and their first um, new American standard and I I love it I love the color yours won't come with black art gilding I did that and I added however many ribbons I want so do things to your bibles to get you excited about them if you're not excited about them, you're not going to use them. You are going to watch TV over picking up your Bible. You're going to go out with your friends over picking up your Bible. If you make your Bible fit you to where you're excited about it when it's open, you're going to read it. And I will never say, read one verse, put it up, and you're good. No, that is the coward's way. You'll never get anywhere with that. It is good that you read something, I will say that, but I'm here on this channel, we're going to push you further. You're going to do more. Read the whole Bible cover to cover over and over and over again. My biggest fear was once I finished my, my Bible, I, I would know everything. I wouldn't need to go back to it. Oh boy, did he show me something different. Every time I go back and finish the Bible, I start right back over right at the very beginning and every single time there's new things in there that I've read a hundred times I didn't even understand I did not need them at that time so they wasn't enlightened to me my spirit didn't get excited my spirit didn't understand until it was that season that day for me to use it for me to need it for me to understand it that's not just for me that's for everybody and this is a lifelong journey just because you finish your bible one time doesn't mean you get to wipe your hands and that's it you can go to church every sunday and whatever the pastor has to say that's it for you that is no spiritual walk you're never going to have any any spiritual fruits come up you're not going to be able to um, help anybody being that type of way all right so right now I did want to share what I am using this Bible for. I said I was not going to mark in it until I finished reading it. I just finished reading it the day before yesterday. So I'm going to come back through. And as I was reading it, I was keeping a whole list. What are the possible, 
what I like to call themes. I always come to my Bible reading uh, marking system time, my Bible, we could say Bible study time. I come to my Bible study time with a purpose. There's a purpose. Why am I marking up my Bible? I could, oh, I, I'll do it for a different one. Okay. There was a something I was going to say, but I'll leave that for a different video. So there, um, a theme that popped up was heart. Where is your heart? How are you going to fight your heart from simple desires? That the next one was the Lord's army. How, you know, how's the Lord's army? Where's the Lord's army? Is it only when you need him? Is he always there? Um, shepherd and sheep. How am I following God? You know, faith. This is the one where I really, really picked it up. So why do I pick up my cross and follow him? That's the question that came to me. It was no longer a theme. This question popped up because somebody asked me, Kat, how are you so devoted to reading your Bible? How are you doing it? And I wanted to be able to answer that question. And it's just, I have such a hunger for God's word. I want knowledge. I want to know what he has for me. And just because I gain knowledge on a question doesn't mean my journey stops there. So when it went from my creative style, I went from just marking and writing up the Bible. So I no longer need need to be creative in the word I am straight on meat how am I going to apply these verses to my life how do I use them they're in just because this one verse may apply to this way for this day because I basically keep it as a spiritual diary this verse meant this on this day and this is how I used it and this is how I applied it and this is my reflection for it not all of my verses that I read, or if I come back to this verse, this was back in uh, June of 2020. So this was three years ago. If I read this now, I'm going to get something different than I did back then. When, and I see that as a good point because what? I'm growing. So I always want knowledge. All right. So what I'm doing here when I'm reading, I am only using one color. I love a ton of colors. I love all that. That looks beautiful, but I am not about to overwhelm myself with a ton of colors. One color, pink. Pink represents me. When I'm coming here, when I'm reading, I want to know why am I devoted to them? Why am I following them? What, you know, what is it? So right now, at the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Yeah, I'm totally marking that because I'm thankful that he created it. I'm thankful that we have this world. I colored up the little light here. Um, the next one really quick down here, uh, we have, okay, I will greatly multiply your pain and yet your desire will be for your husband and he shall rule over you. This is extremely important for us women to read right now. Right now, the media, the world's telling us that we have to be boss babes, that we have to be independent from men. We don't need men. And that's complete opposite of what it says in the Bible here. So I definitely want to mark this. And this is yet another reason why I'm devoted to reading God's word, because it shows you in black and white how we as wives are supposed to be. We're supposed to be submissive to God, um, to, to our husbands. And I have this little heart up here to show me when I flipping through, I can see a heart like, okay, I have a marking down here and I date it because I will come back and back with a different color and mark it up a different way. The same way I did my Traveras, I'm going to do this one the exact same way. So let me put this down. All right, and this one right here. Oh, this was a good one, and I did all of these last night. So if you do well, your face will be cheerful. Well, if you do well, will your face not be cheerful? If you do not do well, sin will be lurking at your door. It's desires for you, but you must master them. So that, you know, didn't seem like it wouldn't be a verse that you would really need. However, I looked at it as a devoted way. I want to master sin. I don't want to um, fall into the, how easy sin is. So keeping this at the front of my mind, I don't want to fall into my desires. I don't want to fall into, hey, 
it'd be funner if I go hang out with my friends versus reading my Bible. That's something I'm struggling with here. So I need to master that. I need to make sure this is the forefront of my mind. So that's something I, I put marked. I got, I am coloring one little thing. If you notice in like in these pictures on what it's talking about, it favored Abel's and not Cain's and then Abel was dead. So literally focusing on one thing, myself and why I'm being devoted to God right here, just like Noah, I want to be righteous and I want to be blameless. I want to walk with God daily in all of my actions, the way I'm talking. If I'm talking down about somebody, do you think God's sitting here next to me, shaking his head, agreeing with me? Or is he slowly drifting away like I can't be anywhere? Sin is. If we think about sin, God is no longer with us. He can't reside in us if we're constantly thinking about sin, talking about sin, being around sinful people, sinful um, areas, environments. Um, so yeah, just different little things that, that were popping up to where I felt like, yes, I can read this. I will establish my covenant with you. Um, so, oh yeah, this was another one. So Noah did these things according to everything that God had commanded him. And that's what, that's what he did. So if God told me right now, if he came down and said, leave everything, come and follow me, would I be strong enough to do it? Would I be strong enough to leave my, my fur babies, my kitties outside? Would I be strong enough to say like, okay, Lord, I am following you. Like I, that's something huge to think about. So read the Bible with a purpose. Your theme may not be the same as mine. Your theme may be like happiness. You need to mark up verses that are only happy. Still read your Bible. Please don't Google verses that pertain to happiness. Whatever you're looking, whatever your subject is going over, please don't do that because there are so many more verses that can pertain to you in this moment and that will speak to you for a certain, for that reason that you're in, that you need. That Google or whatever person made that list at that time may have. Oh yeah, and the water prevailed up to 150 days. How, cr how crazy would you be sitting in your home for 150 days not going outside? Like think about that. How devoted to God did they have to be to not go crazy? Like I would go crazy. So that, that little, um, scripture really 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 popped up in my head so yeah it just and these scriptures that I mark people may look at it and be like why why would you mark something like that that doesn't make any sense and it's okay if it doesn't make sense to you this is not your bible this is mine this is what I needed this is how I'm doing it and what is like I said at the beginning what we should be praising and uplifting is that I am in it Okay, and another thing that I really found helpful is writing out your spiritual journey. So whenever I finished a book of the Bible, I will write out here, like if you look at one of my pages. Um, let's see the last one. Okay, so right here, I write out, I wrote out my prayers, I wrote out my devotional, that's what I did at the beginning. And then I went through all my flags and I, I highlighted them. So I'm keeping track of what I'm doing every single day spiritual wise so if i see that i'm slacking on being spiritual maybe i'm doing a bunch of fun stuff and every now and then oh i read a verse you know i would see like i'm giving god and putting him on the back burner i'm giving the world more attention and feeding into my fleshly desires than having him on the forefront if you look at my day my day is full of giving glory and grace and um, attention to him it's all him 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 throughout the whole day. And when I find a day that it's slacking, I know like, okay, no, no, we got to change that and we got to fix it. But flipping through here, it really helps seeing it in black and white where your problem is. Because you may not, if you had a busy day, you're not going to remember that you wrote out a prayer or you wrote out your devotional or you finished like whatever book of the Bible, like you may not think about that stuff. Seeing it in black and white is an encouragement to continue to do it. So I do recommend keeping track of how many verses you read and um, 
what all you are doing spiritually. You could even write out like, I seen somebody in the store today and I went home and I prayed over them because I seen this and I felt this. You could even do something like that. So the more that you think about being spiritual, um, doing spiritual things, the more it would just become an everyday, not like a routine, but it becomes your life, which is that's the goal. That's what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to be disciples for God. How can we be a disciple for God if we're out um, hanging out with our friends, if we're out uh, buying designer clothes and doing um doing things that the world does, listening to their music and doing all kinds of stuff like that instead of putting him first, doing what is good for the kingdom. So, and another real quick thing before I forget, everything that we do throughout the day, washing dishes, uh, serving our husbands, cooking, cleaning, uh, down to the kitty litter, everything that we do throughout our day, don't do it with a, regudge, a regretful or regudgingly Oh, I don't know the word. Don't do it with the well. Someone else should be helping me. All right. So do it with a do it with a servant, like a servant. You're going to do all this for the glory of God. You're going to give Him the glory. I'm cleaning out this litter for glory for God. I am starting to um, go out. Okay, I got to go. Remember, be a creative tool in our Father's art box. Again, everything that we do throughout the day, all glory to Him. Serve Him. Give it to Him. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.